Welcome to Student Connections. Our students connecting with our community. St. Clair County has 621 service members who have died in service of their country since World War I. The Blue Water Area Fallen Heroes Community Banner Program is seeking to scan photos of all 621 service members and put them on banners to hang on light posts across all St. Clair County during the Memorial Day festivities. These banners will feature the rank of the fallen heroes, their photograph, name, branch of service, war, conflict, age, and city they lived in. I'm Noah Hansen. And I'm Josie Yaw. Joining us today is U.S. Air Force veteran Ed Weixler. As a project this big is going to take a long time to complete, so um, how long have you been working on these banners and how much longer do you think it will take? We first started on, the, uh, on this project uh, June 2nd, uh, 2017. And at that time we figured three or four years and as a project progressed, we decided that it would take place Memorial Day weekend and a week before and a week after Memorial Day, uh, 2021. So you've been working on this project for over a year and a half now, and there's a lot more to be done. How many photos have you scanned to date, and how many more do you have to scan? Uh, of the 621 we're looking for, last week I scanned number 331, and we will never quit looking for additional photos. So we hope to get them all. It's problematic to think that we will get as many as we'd like from World War I, because there were very few people who had cameras. But that doesn't mean that you give up. There's always things like Ancestry.com or a lot of other sources. So. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you could have made a project that recognizes um, service members. What made you, what gave you the inspiration for light posts? The seed for this project took place when my, my brother and I um, attempted to make a one day trip to the southeast corner of Pennsylvania um, and come back the same day. Well. Don't make plans like that because it doesn't work. Um, and this was June 2nd, 2017, and we pulled into this small four block long farming town called Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. And keep in mind, June 2nd, so it's a few days after Memorial Day. And on the light poles, which were 75 feet apart, there were banners of 83 area GIs who had died in service. And because we come from a military family, we got what the message was. And all the way home, my brother and I kept telling ourselves, we have to do this. We have to do this. Um, we don't want our project to be like everybody else's. We want ours to be inclusive. And um, so what we're hoping for is that the message of the project gets out and people understand the sacrifice that was made by all these young people, and they were. With all the fallen heroes from St. Clair County, it's great for a project like this to recognize them all. Why is it important for everyone, including younger generations, to continue to remember these heroes? Great question. You do your work well. It's very easy to get complacent. It's very easy to think along the lines of entitlement. Um, but you diminish that when you when you do your research and you recognize that people sign on the dotted line, whether they were drafted, whether they enlisted, whether they were commissioned officers, and that signature basically was a blank check that somebody whose face you'll never see, whose voice you'll never hear, whose name you'll never know, is going to put into place a series of events which may get that check cashed and cost you your life. Um, and uh, when you go in the service and you sign on the dotted line, you know that, there, that you've signed a blank check, um, but you do that for love of country and uh, the freedoms that we all enjoy. And that's the, that's the lesson to be learned from this. Yeah, that's great. I think it's a great, great idea for that. Um, could you give us an idea of what the banners look like? Uh, I could do better than an idea. Um, if I have enough cable here. This is uh, Corporal William Ruggieri, who died in World War II. He was from Port Huron. And this is uh, Wayne Teeple, who died in Vietnam. Uh, if I have enough wire to get over there. 
And this is Private Shane Reefer, who was killed in Afghanistan. Um, so a project like this is obviously probably costly. Um, uh, what kind of budget do you have set, and do you have to raise any more money? Because of COVID-19 and some other challenges, we have not been able to do fundraisers. Um, but we've had people um, who have done significant fundraising for the project. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention to you, uh, in February of 2019, uh, my partner at that time was uh, the St. Clair County uh, Veterans Affairs Office. And a 17-year-old high school student from Cross Lex had approached Nancy Deasing and wanted to do a class leadership project. But because she came from a military family, she wanted it to be something related to militaries and families. And um, Nancy said in passing, well, we're doing this banner project, but we're just now getting it off the ground. And you know, it's going to be three or four years before, before you know, it becomes a reality. And that was the end of the conversation. And in one night in February of 2019, Riley Black, a 17-year-old senior, raised $5,500 for this project. Um, and that told us we're not the only ones who get this project. And then there's been two major fundraisers that we had virtually nothing to do with that came from Kiwit, uh, who's the contractor for uh, the new DTE power plant in um, uh, I think it's East China Township. Uh, the skilled tradesmen had raised on two different occasions over $2,200, $2,300, and DTE had matched it uh, both times. That put us up to about $15,000 total. And then uh, over the last year, year and a half, we've had additional monies come in. Right now, to print what we print the photographs that we have already scanned, we're going to need between seven and 8,000 additional dollars. And that's just to print what we have. As the photos come in, we're still going to keep this money. I mean, we're still going to try to raise additional money for a couple of reasons. Number one, to deal with wear and tear. Uh, number two, to print out uh, photos as we continue to get them after this year. Because this project is every year. This project is designed to outlive us all. And there will always be people who go into the military, um, you know, whose lives are true, true of duty ends, you know, uh, all too soon. So we need to have money set aside for those photographs. Uh, but that's, that's our budget. It's just mind boggling that those of us who are in the trenches doing this haven't done anything to raise any money. And the community as a whole um, has just stepped up unbelievably. It's probably the greatest thing in your life you ever want to be involved in, because the project is about us and we, not I and me. Yeah, that's, yeah I think that's great. It's really cool that everyone's you know, really coming together to make this happen. Right. So there are over 600 families that you have to, you know, like you to be able to get to. Do you think that you'll be able to eventually find a photo and get a banner for everyone? Think? No. Hope? Yes. There, there's, there's always hope. Um, and when you sit down, when you sit down with a family and you're scanning a photograph and they tell you with tears in their eyes, you know you're the first person outside of this family who's mentioned that name in decades, decades. This is powerful stuff. And it reflects on all of us. St. Clair County has many different cities um, in the area. Are there, is there a plan to um, put up the banners near the families? That's the only place that the banners will fly. Um, such as Shane Reeferts will be in Cottrellville Township every single year. Um, and the idea is to get the people in that community to associate that face with that name. Uh, it's nice to have a name on a monument, but if you can't look into the eyes of that young person, uh, they're basically unknown. Yeah, so it's great that the banners will be up for Memorial Day. When will they you know, be put up, and then how long will they stay up? And do you plan to do this, like you said, for every year? 
that's, that's been the plan from day one. Um, we, will, we will pass out the banners 10 days before Memorial Day and pick them up 10 days after. Uh, the hope is that every community, township, village, hamlet, will put them up for seven days before Memorial Day and seven days after Memorial Day. And yes, like I said earlier, this project is designed to outlive us all. It yeah. will go up every year. Um, if somebody is watching from home right now, how can they help to make this project a success? Like, is there contact information that they can donate money to, email addresses? Okay. If, first of all, if they have a photograph of someone who, the qualifications for a banner is if the GI died in service. This is not just limited to killed in action. But if they have a photograph or know of someone who does have a photograph, the contact number, our 24-7 hotline is 810-985-2007. Um, if they want to make a contribution, all contributions go directly through the Community Foundation of St. Clair County. No one has access to the money, so every dime, every penny raised goes to this project. Um, and the Community Foundation's only role in this project is to pay the bills for production of the banners. And their address, again, will be on that rack card. It's 500 Water Street, Port Huron, Michigan, 48060. And please remember to write on a memo line of your check, Fallen Heroes Banner Project. And those, those contributions are all tax deductible. Mr. Weitzler, thank you very much for giving, you know, giving us more information about this project. We hope that everyone watching will appreciate seeing the Fallen Heroes banners in May. We also hope the folks consider helping the group reach their goal by either spreading the word or making a small donation. We must always remember those who have served to keep our nation safe.